Hello, bonjour, bienvenido. I'm Amy Stone, your very favorite life coach. I'm a life coach for step parents. And today I'm going to talk about in this video how I choose to be selective when I receive advice and suggestions um, and why I offer this up as a tip for you. I happen to have the opinion that I think it is helpful for step parents, parents, and people in relationships to keep this in mind. As a life coach, I'm not actually in the position of uh, giving advice um, all the time. What I do is I share my experiences as a wife, as a mom, as a stepmom, as a daughter, and whatever else might be relevant. And I'm happy to share things that I have tried and what has worked and not worked for me necessarily. Um, I happen to have developed a particularly strong opinion about this, um, which is that when I, when it comes to suggestions and advice uh, from other people as a step parent, a parent, a full-time caregiver, a spouse, my opinion is that while academic knowledge and training is wonderful and very helpful, good actual lived experience is also significant and very helpful and sometimes very different. Um, after a lot of years of living, this has become a hill I might die on. Do you know this expression, a hill I will die on, right? So before I accept suggestions and um, advice from other people, I just like to know whether or not they do have actual lived experience like mine. And I learned this, you guys, um, by repeatedly trying suggestions offered up to me by individuals, some of them trained professionals, um, and some of them just people that I ran into that when didn't necessarily work the way I expected, or perhaps very well. And sometimes they were very, very well, but sometimes they don't. And coming back later to find out that the person who had offered me these tips and suggestions and advice turned out to not have relevant experience being in a situation like mine. And over time, I learned and figured out that I could ask these people if they had the experience. And I also have learned over time ways of speaking up against unwanted advice and also just ignoring and moving past advice that isn't helpful. So let me tell you a story. Um, a few years ago when I was a, had recently decided that I was going to be a life coach, I ran into a longtime friend of mine who asked me what I was doing, and I shared that I was working as a life coach for step-parents. Um, and my friend, who I've known a long time, said to me that um, she hoped it didn't offend me or hurt my feelings, but that she would never send anybody to me for assistance because she thought it was the job of a professional like her daughter who was a licensed therapist and had a degree in early childhood development. I was not offended. Um, I was not hurt. Um, and I totally know that people have very strong opinions about what life coaches are and what they aren't. Um, and her daughter sounds amazing. And this is a fantastic and valuable degree. So I did follow up and ask some questions about her daughter, who is young, a new graduate, single, unmarried, no children, also not a stepmom. So she's got academic and professional credentials, which are valid, important, and should not be discounted, right? And they signify something very important, that she's completed this academic training. Often that includes very valuable supervised clinical practice. These are really valuable skills, very awesome. But what academic credentials don't mean usually is that they have any experience living in these situations, right? So studying about long relationships like marriage is different than being married, right? Um, knowing how to treat a broken arm is different than experiencing having a broken arm. Reading about behavior modification techniques for toddlers is, in my experience, completely different than actually trying to get a uh, toddler to stop jumping on the furniture, say. Um, discussing with like-minded peers the challenges of stepping into a family as a step-parent is totally not the same as actually doing it day in and day out as your life, right? So figuring out uh, what to do 
and listen to, in my experience, can be challenging, right? This is just my opinion. I call it the hill I might die on. When it comes to taking advice about living with and parenting stepkids and kids, I have learned that people who have not done this thing tend to have a different perspective and give different suggestions than people who have lived it themselves. Um, and this applies to professionals and academics and also just people you run into in life. In my observation, though, we tend to give a lot of emphasis and weight to people with academic credentials. And these are very, very good things to have. I just personally have, you know, had some experience, right? I have had a lot of very, I personally had a lot of very strong opinions about the West best ways to be a stepmom or a mom or a caregiver before I actually did those things. And then I tried it myself. Living the experience gave me a level of understanding and compassion that I didn't have before. That may not be true all of the time, but it was for me. And this applies both to the things that I did experience and the awareness that there are a lot of things that I haven't experienced. So the hill that I really might die on is that I think it matters whether the person giving suggestions about step parenting and parenting has relevant experience. And why that is important is because people don't always volunteer this. And so I've had to learn to ask. I will simply say, are you a step parent? <laughs> uh, how old are your stepkids? How old are your kids? Or how long have you been married? Right? Um, how did that work out for you when you tried this yourself? not combative, not challenging, just questions to validate whether or not the person has been through the thing that they are helping me with. And if people don't have the experience, I don't ignore it necessarily. I just factor it in to how I'm going to apply the information that they are giving because it really could be a great suggestion. And I don't mean to be saying that anybody should not listen to professionals. We should. We just also may sometimes want to find people who've walked the walk. I want to normalize asking these questions of even of professionals, right? I'm not offended when people ask me about my credentials. I don't have a PhD or an MD or a JD or even an EDD. Um, but if you want to ask me about my lived experience with my stepkids, I think that I will happily put my life experience up side by side with another person's textbook knowledge. I do not mean to be saying that one is better than the other. I'm saying they are different and that life experience has value. I want to make it normal to be asked. So we know this, right? Training is not the same as living. Um, I once had a conversation with a parent educator who offers a full variety of training for parents and has some very um, significant and impressive uh, industry partners. And during our conversation, I learned that she did not have any children. She had worked as a nanny for a year, and that was what she um, had as her credentials. I talk to people often who um, start with ideas that maybe being a teacher is enough to give them experience raising children, but being a teacher gives you experience being a teacher, and it's not actually the same thing as being a step parent or a parent. Neither is being a therapist, a pediatrician, a social worker, or a nanny. The work experience is extremely valued. It's just not the same as living the role, right? And here's the thing, in my opinion, and this is just my opinion, it's very easy to tell somebody how to sleep train a child or how to give them medicine that tastes bad or how to hold a strong line at, with a teenager or how what they would do if their kid was being bullied by a teacher. But until you've tried to get foul tasting medicine into a very sick and dehydrated toddler or made the decision about whether a kid needs stitches at 3 a.m. when you are asleep and it's storming outside, or you've had a kid refuse to get into a car seat, refuse to eat, you know, or you've lived the thing with bullying the school or so on and so forth, your suggestion, while valuable and helpful, is just conjecture, right? And that's okay, right? All the things I listed, you guys, those are actually 
little things. They feel very big at the time. They are very important, but there are big, tough topics that come up in families and they don't happen inside an academic bubble. They happen in our living rooms. They happen at our dining room tables. They happen in the middle of the night when we're alone. They happen when the weather is bad. They happen when we're, you know, under a lot of stress. And what I have learned in my opinion is that it makes a difference if people who are offering us suggestions the person on the other side of the conversation, it makes a difference if that person has walked a similar walk to what we're going through. Now, I can't stop people from telling me what they think I should do. All I can do is carefully filter the information I'm given by asking them if they have relevant experience. And I just want to make it a regular thing that it's okay to ask and be asked. And this is why I say, as many times as I can, that I have been a step parent for over 20 years. Um, I am also the mom of two mostly grown kids. My parents were divorced. I've been the kid who changes houses and lives through a custody dispute. I've experienced parental alienation by a person who's in my actual family and dealt with that pain. The things I talk about, the things I offer the stories from are, some of them are things that I've studied academically. Others are things that I've experienced. And that's where this came from, right? So this got a little preachy today. Um, I guess that's okay. It's probably time to stop. Um, I want to say thank you very much for watching. Be sure to come and visit my website for more information if you want it about my coaching and resources that I offer.